Hi everybody, welcome back to Bustling Home. Today I want to talk about one of those common questions that I get walking around with six little kids. I'm not talking about, are you running a daycare? Many large families get the question, did you have all of these kids on purpose? Do you know how that happens? Well, yes and yes are the short answers. More specifically, am I an attention-seeking, baby-crazy lady who wants nothing more than to be a mom of a whole mess of kids? Well, not really. That's not how this started at all. I would not have gone through 10 years of college if that was my goal in life. I earned a doctorate in atmospheric sciences, and I earned a master's degree in journalism. If I had planned to be a mom this whole time to a whole bunch of kids and stay home and homeschool them... Why would I have earned these degrees that obviously have no application in being a mom? If I had wanted to seek attention for anything, I would not have majored in atmospheric sciences. It's not exactly a high-profile field unless you want to go into policy and climate science, which I'm not even going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. I'm not going to get into the political arena. Now, did I always want to have a large family? Since that's not necessarily mutually exclusive with having a career. Well, no, not really. I figured I'd get married, have two or three kids, live in the suburbs, do the career thing, send them to daycare and public school. Just the traditional suburban life. Then I met Jeff and had a set of twins. That's two kids, and they were awfully cute. And they're really good kids, too. And then we had all of these embryos left over. And suddenly, my priorities shifted. I wasn't really thrilled with the way that my career was heading anyhow. Academia was not at all what I had expected. And I realized somewhere along the way that sending my kids to daycare, I wasn't raising them. Somebody else was. That's not the way I wanted my kids to grow up. So even five years ago, or certainly ten years ago, Homesteading, homeschooling, and becoming a home manager was not at all in my plans. Now, as far as having twins intentionally, even with IVF, twins are by no means a guarantee. The best odds I've seen, which I fit into when I started IVF, I don't anymore after multiple miscarriages, are that there's a 25% chance of twins, a 50% chance of a singleton, and a 25% chance of no live birth. So cumulatively, for three sets of twins in a row, there's about a 1.6% chance of that happening. No, I did not plan to have a bunch of twins. That's not possible. So in short, yes, it's intentional that we are having a whole bunch of kids close together, and no, we didn't plan it. (laughs) at least not more than a couple of years ahead of time. We take it one transfer at a time, and so far this is looking like the best path for us. As far as how close we're having the kids together, there are a handful of reasons that we are having kids as closely together as my doctors would recommend, which is waiting nine months after a vaginal birth or 12 months after a C-section to conceive again. One of the reasons is that I'm not getting any younger. I'm only 35, but as much as I'd like to deny it, my body's getting older, and older bodies just don't handle pregnancy as well from what I've heard. 35 years old is already considered advanced maternal age statistically, although that doesn't necessarily apply to every individual. I don't know how much it will apply to me. All of the embryos are still from 29-year-old Nikki. So I won't have any of the complications that can come from older eggs from an older woman. But as far as things like preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and just general fatigue and aches and pains, that's my body, and I'm not escaping age. I also don't particularly enjoy pregnancy, so I'd prefer to finish up having kids as soon as I can. Not that I want to have fewer kids and be done, but as many kids as we are going to have, I would like to finish that time of our lives as soon as we can. In addition to my age, Jeff isn't getting any younger, obviously. At the time of this filming, 
We have two five-year-olds, two three-and-a-half-year-olds, and two almost two-year-olds, and Jeff is 59. For the remaining four embryos that we have frozen, if we do a transfer soon and then use the recommended spacing for the last transfer, assuming this next transfer works out the way I would hope it does, he will be 62 by the time the last baby or babies are born from that second transfer that we have left. Again, assuming that both transfers are successful. While Jeff is a very healthy almost 60 year old, he's also not escaping all of the foibles of age. From a purely practical perspective, it costs $800 to store the embryos every year. And the transfers cost $4,000 a piece. So using a home equity line of credit at 5% interest, say, it would be cheaper to pay the interest on the $4,000 for the transfer than to keep paying the storage fee. So in the long run, we would actually save money by using up all the embryos as soon as we can instead of paying that storage fee. We also don't have to adjust nearly as much bringing a newborn or newborns home if we still have kids in diapers and we're used to doing the sort of baby thing. Our babies right now are almost two years old, so they're more toddlers than babies, but at least we're still used to the all-day diaper thing and having to carry wipes and diapers everywhere, although I may never give up wipes at this point. Those are so useful. In any case, I think it's easier to transition to having newborns at home if you're not used to having all kids independent. So if my youngest were five years old instead of my oldest being five years old and having four more kids under that, then a five-year-old can dress themselves. They can brush their teeth. They can brush their hair, more or less. The quality is not the greatest, but they can do it. They can take themselves to the bathroom. They can feed themselves. Since my youngest right now are two years old, it's much less of a change to go from having my youngest be two years old to a newborn rather than having my youngest be five years old or older to a newborn. All in all, our miniature rolling riot works well for us too. We weren't sure how well it was going to work having kids as closely as we have because my first set of twins and second set are 17 months apart and then the second and third set are about 21 months apart so it's pretty closely spaced even for singleton pregnancies. But it's worked really well, better than we had expected. Since it's working so well, why not continue? Unfortunately, the miscarriages have put a bit of a wrench in that, so we won't be able to do it quite the way we have been, but hopefully we can use up the rest of the embryos pretty soon. Now, I acknowledge that having closely spaced pregnancies and a bunch of kids is not all sunshine and roses. A lot of days are really hard. Trust me. I know. It's hard. At one point, I had, I think, five kids in diapers, and that's full-time diapers. Not even some of them are in night diapers. Some of them are in full-time diapers. That's five kids in diapers full-time. It's a lot to keep up with and a lot to carry around. There was no way that I was going to do cloth diapers, for instance, because I just could not fit that many cloth diapers into a diaper bag unless I took a rolling suitcase. And just for reference, our church does not have an elevator and there are lots of stairs. Rolling suitcases don't work that well on stairs. There's also somewhat greater risk to me having closely spaced twin pregnancies. But there's also some risk if I have them more spaced apart and I am older for the last sets of kids that we have. So I'm not sure where the balance falls there if it's more risky to have pregnancies closer together or to be older when I am pregnant. I don't know. On the balance, Jeff and I decided that having them closely spaced and just having a few really hard years at the beginning was the better way for us to go. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.